season begins anew as Arkansas welcomes in Alabama State to kick off this college basketball year. And we are so pleased to join you from Bud Walton Arena. He's former Razorback Blake Eddins. I'm Alex Perlman. Thanks for joining us. This is some way for Arkansas to start this season against a conference favorite. Well, really, and, and Alabama State is not your usual SWAC opponent that you bring in to get the victory. They're a preseason favorite in the SWAC. Good guard play, have a big man transfer, Wendell Lewis. From Mississippi State, he's played in this building before. I talked to head coach Lewis Jackson this morning. He thinks his team's ready. He's excited about the contest. It's the fourth year now for Mike Anderson here at Arkansas. It's pretty much NCAA tournament or bust time. Well, not necessarily or bust, but this team's ready. If you're around them, they feel like an NCAA tournament team. If you go to practice, if you watch them do what they do, it's a much more mature team that's ready to take that step forward and compete and play in the NCAA tournament. All right, well, looking at this Hornets team, a lot of athletes, and it all starts with this guy. Jamel Waters has been fantastic his whole career. Well, he is the team. Everything goes through him. He's a preseason first-team all-swag player. The ball goes through him. He's going to pound the ball. They want him to do everything for their offense. Jamel Waters will be in control of the show tonight. And for the Razorbacks, one of the most athletic players in the entire country, not only the SEC, Michael Qualls. Without that out, Michael Qualls was on SportsCenter Top 10 more than any other player in the country last year. I expect to see that a lot more this year. But what we need out of Michael Qualls is more consistency. He's got to hit that jump shot. He's got to play hard every second he's in the basketball game. If he does that, sky's the limit for Michael Qualls. Razorbacks are 22 and 12 last year, 10 and 8 in the SEC. There you see the starting five for the Razorbacks and Alabama State coming off of a 19 and 13 year. What stands out to you here in these starting five? Well, first of all, that, that Rashad Madden's not in the starting five. I mean, Jabril Durham's going to start the JUCO transfer. He's going to start at point guard uh, for Arkansas. That jumps out at me. But you see a mature squad. You see, you see a much better team, I think, from an overall team standpoint than you did last year. Well, the Razorbacks last year made it to the NIT second round. Definitely not where they wanted to be, but the talent is there this year. You know that Mike Anderson has the guys that he want in there, and you get the feeling things are different. Well, they are, and I, and I said this in the pregame. If you're at the practices, if you're around these guys, it feels different. They're much more confident. They're much more mature. It's a team that expects to win basketball games. Our officiating crew is Lee Cassell. He is the crew chief today, joined by Tim Gaddis and Rick Hartzell. While well, the Hornets coming out preseason favorites in the SWAC, they return 11 players, including all five starters. You would think that that means they can pick up right where they left off. And there's Mike Anderson in his fourth season with the Razorbacks, 59 and 39 here in Fayetteville. Talking with him, he's been anticipating this season as much as any other in his career. He's very excited about what the Razorbacks bring to this team. Bobby Portis, Bobby Brown ready to tip it away. It is basketball time here in 2014-15 as the Razorbacks win the tip. Antlon Bell who can really shoot from the outside and instead decides the finger roll in the lane. Boy, Bell's been a streaky player for Arkansas, the best three-point shooter on this team. But, man, when he gets going and hits that first shot, he's a better player. Good to see him hit that first shot if you're an Arkansas Razorback. Alabama State operating on offense for the first time. As Luther Page, a senior from Ann Arbor. One of three seniors in this starting lineup. Long jumper for Strong off the side of the iron. Hogs will love to push it here. Bell spots up, way off. Well, not what you'd expect after he hit the first shot, but Alabama State's going to run a lot of motion. They're going to work the ball around, try and get those open jump shots like that. They want the ball screen. They want to work it around. They want to suck some clock off. But if, if you get shots like that, Alabama State's going to take them. Yeah, Demarcus Robinson knocks down the triple. And it's a 3-2 Alabama State lead here with a minute and 15 seconds gone. Up ahead, Robinson. Good transfer inside, and Portis harasses strong. When Mike Anderson can't be happy with this team's transition defense. This Arkansas team works against this kind of pressure every day. You'd expect them to cut that ball off, not give them those lanes, much less two. And now you have Bobby Portis with a foul to start the game. Strong at the free throw line, 59% last year. 
In and out on the first. Leading rebounder on this team, also the leading blocks man with 32 total. Definitely not the biggest starting five, Blake, when you've got three guys at 6'6", six, six, and that's your tallest height. So one of two for Alabama State Strong. Looking for Portis picked off. Active hands, and it's touched out of bounds by Brown. Boy, look for Alabama State all day to be shading off on Bobby Portis. When he gets in the low block or when he's calling for the basketball, that offside double team or that high side double team's going to be coming quick. you gotta be, you got to be aware of that if you're the passer, and you have to be aware of that if you're Bobby Portis. If there's a guy on this Arkansas roster that you have to stop night in and night out, is it Bobby Portis? Oh, without a doubt, this is his team. This is Bobby Portis' team. To, to be a true sophomore, you can see every time you're around them, people look to him to lead this team, uh, not only on offense or defense, but just from an overall perspective. When he plays well, this team kind of rallies around him. So if you're going to stop somebody, you start with Bobby Portis. And when Mike Anderson has mentioned to Bobby Portis this offseason, says he's just so much hungrier than he was last year. He's been through that disappointment. Double dribble on Qualls, but he's been through that disappointment, and he just has not, uh, he hasn't gotten to where he wants to get as a player yet, and that's the NCAA tournament. Well, and I think, I think last year you saw Bobby Portis who was kind of figuring his way out, learning the college basketball way, and now he knows what it takes. He knows where he's going. He knows what to expect. So he's pushing, he's working harder, and he's more focused. Brown going to work. Swirls it through. Alabama State with the early lead, but Portis in transition. Count it. And a foul. Well, that's one of the underrated parts of Bobby Portis' game. If you watch him without the ball, he works hard. And if you give him a second, he's going to beat you down the court. He runs every single possession like it's his last. The 6'11 sophomore out of Little Rock, all SEC last year, named to the preseason all SEC first team this season. Got the extra opportunity, Portis with his first points of the ball game, and Arkansas just down by one here early on. Really tenacious defense by Arkansas, making it tough for Waters. He knows how to get around it, though. Brown, the junior from Atlanta. Reverse lay and goes for Page. Reason he was first team all swag. Bell for three. Exactly what Mike Anderson needs out of Anthlon Bell, spotting up, catching in rhythm, knocking it down. The junior out of Memphis is playing exactly like Mike Anderson wants him to to start this game on. 33% three-point shooter last year. Offensive foul, Page. Ball's going back to the Razorbacks. When we talked about Bobby Portis getting more comfortable in his own skin, learning the college way a little better, Anthon Bell's doing the same thing. He's a streaky shooter. Sometimes, you know, when he makes it, you know that he's coming in bunches. You know four or five are going to come after that. But when he misses, he gets cold quickly. To see him start off like this, he's worked hard in the offseason is a good thing for this Arkansas team. That's easy money for Portis. You give him that, he's going to drain it every time. Arkansas perfect in the exhibition schedule, most recently an 89-66 win over Pittsburgh State on Thursday. Ugly game, 71 foul shots in that game. Put that foul on Bell. When I spoke to our, our officiating crew chief before the game, trying to get an idea, you know, what's the point of emphasis this year? They kind of do something every year and, and they call too many fouls, more than likely on that point of emphasis. This year it's off the ball. It's going to be down low in the block. Uh, that, that pass that they're about to make, you, you aren't supposed to be touching the receiver. You've got to keep your hands off of people. It's going to lead to more fouls. It's going to slow the game down, but it is the point of emphasis this year. You wonder if it's better than the emphasis being on the freedom of motion like it was last year, and we just had some slugfests at the beginning of the college basketball year. Brown had the three, passed it up to Waters, and he buries it. When Alabama State coming out like a veteran team, not scared, pulling the trigger, knocking shots down. Arkansas's got to weather the storm. You want to get into their bench, get those inexperienced players in the basketball game. Harris with the strong take. 
And Alandis Harris could really be a factor for Arkansas in his last year as a redshirt senior transfer from Houston. Durham drew the foul underneath the bucket, and the Razorbacks have the lead as we take our first time out of the ball game. Great back and forth start here is, uh-oh, Bobby Portis coming at you. Back here in Fayetteville, fans having a great time at Bud Walton Arena, even though it's starting to snow outside, doesn't matter to those fans in there. They're watching an Arkansas team that really has an NCAA tournament on their mind after last year. It was a great season, there's no doubt about it, uh, going 22 and 12, 10 and eight in the SEC. But you see that loss in the first round of the SEC tournament, kind of knocked them out of the bubble, and, and that was the game that really they needed to have. Boy, and that stung, that stung deep. It's something that this team felt throughout the offseason. If you talk to them, you know, what, what hurt the most last year, they all say that South Carolina game. Coming off a six game win streak, Everything was coming together for Arkansas. You felt like they'd go in that SEC tournament, win a couple games, walk right into the NCAA tournament, lose to South Carolina, and you end up in the NIT. So certainly redemption on the minds of these Razorbacks. Same five come out on the floor for Arkansas as we restart play here in Fayetteville. Durham runs the point again. Kind of surprising to see him in as the starting point guard and not Rashad Madden. Portis misses on the fall away, collected by Brown. Waters around a screen. There's Wendell Lewis, the Mississippi State transfer. Great look inside. Can't finish. Strong is strong on the layout. When Bobby Portis, after getting that first foul early in the game, has done a good job of altering shots without being overly aggressive and picking up that second foul. Harris Spence, the first lay in, no, gets his own board. And Lewis comes over the top. Well, and the great feet, athleticism, balance of Atlantis Harris gets to the bucket, doesn't get it, keeps position, gets the ball, goes back up strong, gets to the free throw line. Foul on Wendell Lewis is his second. Well, I think Mike Anderson would like to see Alanis Harris be a little more of a bull in a china shop and really be a glass eater and get on the board, grab those rebounds. He's got enough of a guard skill set that he drifts out and, and plays on the perimeter. He can do it, but I know they like to see him hitting the glass a little bit more. Robert Ogia comes in for the first time. He is a redshirt junior from Nigeria checking in. Not a ton of basketball experience under his belt, but at 6'9", you know, you can, you can have him in that ball game and be okay with a lack of experience. Oh, great defense by Durham. Cross, look down below! <laughs> That's just a taste of what you're going to get this season 
with Michael Qualls. He just checked into the ball game at that, but a great answer by Robinson. We gotta get another look at that one at some point. That is Michael Qualls at his finest. Portis, hand check foul by Ogia. Look Wait. at this elevation. And, and he just, he does it so easily and effortlessly, but with so much power. that you just, I just want to do that once. Just one time, eight foot goal at a trampoline. I just want to do it once. But give, look, J Jabril Durham needs credit for that dunk. He's not getting enough. Great steal and does a good job of being patient, letting that secondary break almost develop. Qualls fills the lane, good feed, and gets the stuff. Razorbacks with a small advantage over Alabama State here. Ogia, who just checked in. Not a guy that's going to shoot it from there. Strong has a lane. Finds Ogia, and it's blocked in by Qualls. Somehow that found the bottom of the net. Port is going to work. Spins it in off the finger roll. Well, that's just a big boy move by Bobby Portis coming across the lane with the left hand. Strong move, does a good job protecting the basketball. I don't think you would have seen Bobby Portis make that play last year. One of, one of the parts of his game he's worked on, getting in that short corner, either, either hitting that jump shot or doing a good job going back across his body towards the middle of the, of the paint. Lewis Jackson wants timeout as we take another look at that move by Portis. And that's a veteran move. I mean, again, not a move you would have seen Bobby Portis make last year. Patient with the basketball, but a good job protecting it, being strong, and then finishing with that soft touch. The fans calling the Hogs here early on in this one. Arkansas and Alabama State opening up this season. The Hornets have played once. They won 105-64 over Auburn Montgomery on Friday, but this is a little bit of a different test when you throw the Razorbacks on their home floor at them. Yeah, slightly. And I, again, I had a great chat with, with Alabama State head coach Lewis Jackson this morning. Coach Jackson was my AAU coach. <laughs> I've, 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 known him, I've known him since I was 15 years old, dear friend of our family. Uh, still keep up with him. Great to have him here in Fayetteville. He's done a wonderful job at Alabama State. 139 and 146 overall in his 10th season. He's got them as the favorites this year in the SWAC. Robinson's got a wide open trigger and knocks it through. Robinson, eight early points here for Alabama State. We go back and forth. What a basketball game we've had so far. High efficiency. Both teams shooting seven of 12 from the field. So Corey Williams has had a great preseason. Bobby Portis has had a great career. Why not? Just calmly catches it. Looks down to make sure he's behind the three-point line and buries it. Bobby Portis showing a wide range of his repertoire early in the game today. Waters can't answer. Portis has the board, and look at him push. Doesn't matter, he's 6'11". Thrown away, though. Looked like Arkansas really had something going, and then Durham just throws it over everyone. Portis takes a seat. Here's a good look at Williams a moment ago. Ja'Cory Jr. from Birmingham averaged 14 and a half points in the preseason. They're looking for an increased role for him this year. Well, and Ja'Cory sometimes gets ahead of himself. I mean, he's got the ability. He plays hard. He's got the drive. But sometimes he, he gets in too big of a hurry. Uh, everything I've heard about him going into this season is that it feels like, he feels like the game slowed down for him. He feels a lot more comfortable. And I was about to say that when he had the turnover, so I backed up a little bit. <laughs> but I expect to see an increased role from Ja'Cory Williams this season for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Arkansas forces the turnover. It is the third on Alabama State here this afternoon. Anton Beard getting our first look at him in the regular season. A freshman from North Little Rock, ranked the number 90 recruit by ESPN.com, the top-ranked senior in Arkansas. Moses Kingsley, another great player from Little Rock, misses, but Michael Qualls tries to answer. Beard with the scoop finish. With his first official points as a Razorback, Mike Anderson likes Anton Beard's grit, his determination, a, a hard-nosed point guard. He can shoot the basketball uh, with range. Uh, a, a guy that's going to have to factor into Arkansas's game plan if Arkansas is going to do well this season. Little pump fake and score by Darius Scott, the 6'5 junior from Atlanta. Every time Arkansas has gone in, it's been an answer for Alabama State. 
Kingsley can't find it. Watkins saves it to Kingsley. Back to Watkins and the quick righty lay in. Well, rarely do you see a walk-on come in, get minutes like this, and produce. Manny Watkins showing that hard work over the summer. He's blended in. He's playing a bigger role for this Arkansas team. Deflected out of bounds, and the Razorbacks are starting to run here in Fayetteville. Some huge dunks, athletic moves, and they've got a four-point lead. Razorbacks off to a good start. There's Mike Anderson in one iteration, probably pleased with the way that his team is playing here against the SWAC preseason favorite. The Hornets had a great year last year. They were 19 and 13, 12 and six in the SWAC. These two teams are now meeting for the eighth time and it's been all Arkansas. Maybe not a surprise in this series. Oh, not, not at all. And, and, and you would think that's gonna continue today, but, but Arkansas only up four points halfway through the first half. Alabama State coming out with confidence hitting open shots and doing a good job making Arkansas work that offense around and not giving up too many easy buckets to the Razorbacks. And we've seen a lot of players so far for Arkansas. In the preseason, they were really trying to figure out what combinations work the best. And we're still seeing that tinkering here early on in the first half. And I think we'll continue to. Mike Anderson's going to be looking for, for not you know his starting five and his second five. It's that eight or nine guys in this system with what he runs, you've got to have that many that are going to play those minutes. Watkins harassed, and he'll go to the line for two. Big foul by Brandon Graham, the 6'7 senior, coming right down over the top. Well, and give Manny Watkins credit, coming right in the basketball game. Got the steal, got the assist earlier, now gets another steal. Good job being careful with the basketball, protecting it, but also going strong into the free throw line. You just wonder if Manny Watkins would be capable of that last season. He's certainly improved his game this year. Looking for his fourth point of the afternoon. He got it. It's a game-high six-point lead for the Razorbacks. Waters can't hit. Strong. Back up. No, but the tip. There's a bunch of Hornets swarming that uh, net over there and Graham credited with the tip in. Williams can't get the spot up jumper. Here comes Waters. 5-9 versus 6-4. And that time, 6-4 one out. Rashad Madding with the block. Boy, in Arkansas, despite Alabama State staying in this game, doing a good job of not being overly aggressive and, and giving the cheap fouls when they go to the basket. Kingsley alters the shot. Touched off of Alabama State. Darius Scott definitely not in love with the call from Rick Hartzell. Wait, and I'll do something I rarely do. I'll give the officials credit for letting this game play itself out instead of trying to overfishate the first regular season game for both of these teams. Guy to the hole. And he draws the foul. 
So tough when that's the guy that is at the one or the two spot and he is still trying to drive to the hole like that. When Kymad missed a couple days of practice dealing with the family matter, uh, he's back. That's why I, uh, I would imagine you didn't see him in the starting lineup, not taking anything away from Jabril Durham. Uh, but good to see him out here. I, I don't know if we were 100% sure if he'd be back today. Uh, glad to see him out on the court. Kai Madden, you know, it was part of this recruiting class of, of four or five guys that, that were supposed to kind of bring Arkansas back. Most of them were from the state of Arkansas. He's the only one left. He's the only one left from that class. He's fought. He's stayed with it. He's been frustrated at times. But Kai Madden is going to be an integral part if this Arkansas team is going to get to the NCAA tournament this season. Six-point deficit for Alabama State as Graham being really harassed by Williams. Waters throws it up. Kingsley sends it away. Lewis trying to go to work. Beard strips it away. Three on two. And now we get a little bit of sloppy basketball between the two teams. Knocked out of bounds, and that will stay with Alabama State. Boy, great job, Anton Beard. Digging down, getting that still, leading the fast break. Forced that pass, though. You, you, you had a almost two on four. It was bunched up. Had a swarm, as you said earlier, swarm of Hornets. You, you just got to pull it out at that point. If you don't have anything, uh, once you've played and you get acclimated to the speed, you just pull it out, take that possession, work it around, and get a better shot. It's Terrence LaFleur in the ball game for the first time, a sophomore from Alabama. That is a tough fall away for Strong. No, nothing you can do about that. Moses Kingsley with, with textbook defense. Strong with a big time shot. Madden, too much on the three. Arkansas holding on to this four point lead here midway through the first half. Offensive foul. It's on Brandon Graham. And the fifth on Alabama State. Good job by Kyle Madden there. I think it, I don't know if he'd get an Oscar, but but he may get nominated. That's with the emphasis being on touch fouls away from the basketball. Uh, you know you can draw those. They're going to call that quicker. Veteran move by Kyle Madden. A little different than when you played in the in the 60s or 70s. Yeah, we, we, were, <laughs> we had belts and knee pads and. I'm not sure the three-point line was invented. <laughs> it was yet. there. It was there. <laughs> Ball is uh, going to stay with Alabama State here. Lafleur ready to inbound. Last year, five points, two boards, and 32 games played. A big part off the bench for Lewis Jackson. And a foul on Beard. Back and forth they go here. When this is one of the adjustments you, you've got to make as a as a as a new player in this system, you're going to pick up the ball full court. You got to give them a little bit of room, unless you're going to go for that steal. You don't want to lean on that far from the basket. So Robinson brings it up with the all swack point guard Waters out of the game. Brown triggers, not afraid of the three. Bobby Brown says it's my prerogative, knocking it down. <laughs> At least it wasn't Britney Spears saying it. Up ahead, Brown to the hole. Kingsley sends it away. Razorbacks on the break. Back to Watkins. Stays in. What good job, Manny Watkins, bringing it down, letting the fast break develop, getting it to Kai Madden. Kai Madden draws the defense, kicks it back over to Watkins. Knocks it down. Manny Watkins with some huge minutes. Walk on off the bench here in the first half. He's got six points early on. The Razorback lead is three. Kingsley alters another shot. And Williams picks it up. Kingsley has been enormous on the defensive end. Robinson. Oh, we're tied. Timeout, Mike Anderson. When Robinson, that's three for three from the three-point line for him. Spotting, knocking it down. He's been doing it the whole half. 
kind of gets lost in the shuffle each time, comes out with the basketball and knocks down the three. Play's been pretty rhythmic for this being the first game of the season. Sometimes it can be back and forth, their jitters, what have you. Looks like they're in midseason form here today. Well, Alabama State came out, hit a few early shots, got comfortable, got confident, and I think you're seeing that play out here in the first half. Arkansas has got to do a better job finding those key scores for Alabama State, getting out on them, getting pressure on the basketball. Uh, Arkansas had some turnovers in the fast break that you normally don't see out of this Razorback team. Got to cut down on that. Four turnovers for Arkansas in the last two seconds. That can't that be right. That can't be right, that's can not, it? <laughs> is, this like, is this like Anchorman where you read anything that they put on the screen? I'm glad that's all they put and didn't put something else. There's no telling. I'm Alex Perlman. I'm Alex Pearl. Snap broadcast. Got to step its game up a little bit, I guess. Thinking about that in my head, I said that can't possibly be right. Beard, now for Arkansas operating with Madden. Thinking about the pull-up. Strip, but he gets it back. Contact, no call. Lewis takes it down here for Alabama State, and they run. Robinson triggers again. Heat check. Robinson with a primal yell after the make. 14, and he hasn't missed from three. Robinson keeping Alabama State in this game, and it is the Hornets leading the Razorbacks in this one as we take one more look at Robinson stepping out. Cash money, that's a great start for the Hornets. Well, today it has been Demarcus Robinson's world for Alabama State. We're all just living in it. He is five for five, four of four from three-point range, and he is absolutely keeping his team in the game. Alabama State had a great year last season, 19 and 13, 12 and six in the swag, made it to their first postseason since 2010-11, and Lewis Jackson has his team on the right track. Well, if Arkansas misses anything from the players they lost last year, it's perimeter defense. Between Mardrakis Wade, Fred Gully, even Kiko Hydar, when you put them in, uh, may not have been lockdown defenders. Fred Gully was close to it, but you knew what you were getting on the defensive end. Got to find, got to find that guard that's going to be your lockdown defender. Mike Anderson still searching who – is that going to be at this point in the season for the Arkansas Razorbacks? Mike Qualls went 7 of 9 from deep in the preseason, and he hits on his first attempt today. And we're tied as Arkansas gets the ball back. Alabama State's seventh turnover. Arkansas has the same amount. Starters back in for the Razorbacks. 
Wide open three. In and out Durham. LaFleur is giving Lewis Jackson great minutes off of the bench. Pretty move by Strong. Well, and the longer this goes on, the more dangerous it is for Arkansas. You've got to kind of stop this tide, stop this wave coming in at you, and you just got to play through it. Portis is going to the free throw line for two. His team down by two with six minutes left in the first. I know not the spot that Mike Anderson certainly wanted to be in at this point. Check out that monster stuff on Harris. Well, and we've seen this in the exhibition season, even in the first game of, of the regular season for a few SEC teams. And even Memphis loses to Christian Brothers, a D2 team. Uh, I think Ole Miss lost to Charleston Southern. Uh, Auburn struggling with Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, and, and there are a few other examples like that as well. Uh, Arkansas has got to be careful not to fall for that trap and, and let this veteran team get hot, get confident, and go into the second half ready to come back out and win this game. Portis one of two. Qualls gets his hand on it. Oh, that is a bad break for Arkansas. Robinson trying to finish it and does. He is still not missed from the field. Six of six. Harris had it if he wanted. Portis wants it and gets it. Get him the ball. Get Bobby Portis on the perimeter. Spot him up and feed the man. He is absolutely feeling it. Robinson and Portis right now. Something's got to give. Robinson's got it. Skip to the corner. And another three for Alabama State. Give it to Chidozi Amale. Alabama State has been beyond its mind from outside the arc today. Seven of nine. Big boy move by Big Bobby Portis. Boy, and this is where the leader, where your best player steps up, and wants the basketball. Good job getting down there on the block, getting position, and going strong across his body and finishing. And defense forces the turnover. Yeah, Portis up to 16 points, leading everyone on Arkansas by a mile. 16 for that guy as well. At this point in the game, you think Mike Anderson may look down to the bench and see if Lee Mayberry has any eligibility left. <laughs> he get, might look get, right next to him get, and see Scotty Thurman. Get Lee out here and spell him for a few minutes. Portis turns around. It's just too much. Razorbacks in the 2-3 zone. Good look on the baseline. Doesn't go for Strong. Strong and Qualls getting tangled up. When Alabama State continues to be patient on the offensive end, Arkansas having a hard time really hassling them in the half court. Got to make it a full court game if you're Arkansas. Get into their legs, get into that Alabama State bench, and you're going to be in a better spot. Strong picks up the foul just his first. Already 11 fouls on Alabama State here in this half. They've really struggled in that department. And Qualls hits on the first. Qualls is 68% free throw shooter last year. Ended up scoring just under 12 points a game. Increased his scoring average by seven points from freshman year. Waters calls out the play. Over six assists last year, which is good for 12th in the entire country. Finds the open man. Amale off. And Strong stripped. And gets in the way of Harris. 41 to 40, Arkansas and Alabama State in a dog fight here in the season opener in Fayetteville.
It is tight here in Fayetteville, Bud Walton Arena, Arkansas and Alabama State absolutely battling with Alabama State up, or down by one, I should say. Taking a look at, at our star comparison here today, you had a guy like Demarcus Robinson we knew would be good. Bobby Brown had a great year last year. We expect him to have a great season, but Bobby Portis, no surprise, has been the star for Arkansas throughout his whole career here. Oh, well, and we'll continue throughout this season, but, you know, Robinson for Alabama State has, what, 16 points now? Alabama State had three players on the preseason SWAC first team, okay, three. Robinson was not one of those three. So to have him step up is huge for Alabama State in, the, in this setting. Where you have your three players that are your go-to guys, and you get Mr. Number Four stepping up, knocking down threes left and right. Yeah, you know that Brown, Page, and Waters were all named first team all SWAC. What does that do for Lewis Jackson to, to have a guy like that that might not be as heralded as the others, but having a huge game? Well, it opens up your playbook. It opens up your game plan. It allows you to rest. We've seen Waters on the bench more than I think we would have here in the first half. So when you get in the second half and this Razorback team starts getting in your legs, they're a little fresher than they would have been. Landis Harris at the line. Guy that transferred from Houston and uh, has played the last few years at Arkansas. Originally from Little Rock, went to Central High School. One of two from the free throw stripe. Both teams just shooting great percentages. 16 of 30 for Alabama State. 53% is another three drilled by the Hornets. Bobby Brown getting in on the act. Eight of 11 from deep for Alabama State. Durham taking it to the house. And he draws the contact. Looked like Ogio went up. When Alabama State shooting it with confidence, and that may be the understatement of the day, Alex. One more look. A little face contact there, a little hands to the face. Are you surprised by this start for Alabama State at all? Yes, yes. I mean, that's the easiest question I'll answer all day. I'm very surprised. Not not as much. Uh, uh, the pace of the game surprised me that it's not a little more up-tempo, even though we do have a 43 to 43 score right now, a lot of points. But it hadn't really felt up-tempo. Not really a lot of run, a lot of shots made, high percentages from all over the field on both teams. I guess if you're Arkansas, you can take solace in the fact that the chances of them shooting 73% for the entire game from three are pretty much nothing. Well, but they're not nothing. You know, it, it happens in can. Uh, you have to be careful if you're Arkansas. This is the, the biggest question mark for Mike Anderson is guard play this year, especially at the point guard spot and that off guard spot. Can those guys step up, fill the hole of Fred Gully and Mardrakis Wade, Kiko Hyder defensively, but, but lift it higher on the offensive end and give more of an offensive option to Mike Anderson? Right now, I think they're showing that they're still trying to figure out how to step in and mesh and, and get out defensively in the SEC. Waters triggers. Goes to the ground, doesn't make it. That shot was tipped by Kingsley. The Razorbacks come down with it. Watkins going to work. Finds Miles. Offensive foul. Waters just knocked down to the ground. When Waters has been doing that all game, a veteran move on his part. He kind of drifts in and out there in the lane. When he sees you driving across the lane, he's come over every time. He's, they've missed that call a couple times, actually, trying to draw that charge. He gets the call on that one. And there you go, the away from the ball foul, which is what the officials have been focusing on this offseason. When Waters has a grit on his face, you know when you're going into that guy's body, that you're going to try and draw that. You know that you have that ref right over your shoulder. You're going to shield him. You're going to use that angle to draw that foul even more, and, and a good job by Waters drawing it. Two quick fouls on Manny Watkins. Fans starting to get frustrated. But it's what the officials called, not what the fans want. Here's Robinson, who is a perfect six of six from the field, including four from three. Figure you gotta start face guarding that guy. Ogia, up and under. 
and swatted away by Qualls. Tapped out off of Alabama State's Amelie. Maybe a break for Arkansas, or rather for Alabama State there, because uh, that could have been transition well, points. Well, and, and with, with the length of Michael Qualls, he's able to, to not get right up on you to try and block the shot. He can actually give that buffer space, jump up, and not worry about getting the body foul and swing away at the basketball. Just a one-point lead for the Razorbacks. Pretty good harassing defense by Alabama State, but a better pass and the finish. Moses Kingsley, big man from Africa. Boy, good job, Jabril Durham, catching the ball, going across the lane, drawing the defenders over. He saw Kingsley sliding down there in that short corner, low block the entire time, gets in the air, finds Kingsley for the end one. How is he starting to diversify and end up his game? Kingsley or Durham? Kingsley. Well, he's just a steady guy. I mean, when he's out there, he rarely makes mistakes. He, he comes to work every day. He works hard. Uh, he's the exact kind of guy you want on your team, a shot blocker. He, he just stays within himself. I love Moses. I would, I would have loved to have played with Moses Kingsley. I'll say that. <laughs> Another three on the way. Another three for Robinson. Someone get a hand in Robinson's face, or he's just going to hit everything. This is starting to become an historic shooting performance. In and out for Qualls. Miles taps it out of bounds. Robinson five for five. The numbers on Miles' jersey. So not only is Alabama State coming in and competing, at times they've been leading Arkansas in this first half. And it's not like we're three minutes in anymore. No, I mean, it, it's been a battle back and forth. And, and like we talked about earlier, it hadn't been a track meet. It hadn't been much up and down. It's been more of a half-court game. This is what Lewis Jackson wanted coming in. Talking to him this morning, he wants his team to play more of an up-tempo style after this game. He wants them to learn how to run with the basketball, trap, jump those traps, get the steals, get the easy buckets. But today they want to take the air out of the ball. They want to make it half court. They want to take open shots. They've taken them, and not only have they taken them, they've made them. Brown makes on the front end of the one and one. So for Arkansas, is it is it just extending your perimeter defense and, and getting more hands and faces? Look, there, there's one minute and 18 seconds left in the half. Arkansas has 46 points. That's above. The season average of 80 points, which led the SEC last year. Arkansas is fine offensively. It's getting out, getting in those shooters' faces, or not even letting them get the ball to begin with. Maybe we see more deny in the second half. Madden bowling his way to the hoop, but he walked with it. But Arkansas clearly, clearly frustrated right now. Clearly frustrated. He got a little, got a little bump. Tried to draw the foul and keep going. Wasn't there, but, but you can see the frustration ready to get to the locker room if you're Arkansas. And the longer that you let Alabama State hang in, the longer they believe. A double teaming Amelie in the corner. That leaves Robinson open. Waters has it plucked away. Madden running the break. Has to slow things down for a moment. And an open Durham, much quicker than Amelie. And he gets around and swipes it right off the backboard. What a good few minutes here for Jabril Durham. Mike Anderson was riding him hard in practice the last few days. Needs Durham to step up, become more of an integral part of this Razorback team on both ends of the floor. He's done it in the last few minutes. He's a transfer from Seminole State College, a Juco guy you expect to get involved early on. And who do you think is going to get this shot? Who do you think they're trying to find here? It could be Robinson. Waters is looking for him, but Madden's all over him. Two to shoot. And Waters hoists it up and almost spins it in off the backboard. That would have been a fitting way for this first half to come to a close. Waters shakes his head, but he's got nothing to be ashamed about. Tied up through 20 minutes.
We have ourselves quite a ball game here at halftime. 48 apiece. It has been fun. There's no doubt about it here from Bud Walton Arena, along with Blake Eddins, Alex Perlman back with you. Blake, what, what do you make of that first half? Back and forth action and, and really some really good basketball going on. Well, Arkansas had a decent half offensively. It's defense, getting out on those shooters. When you have a guy as hot as Robinson's been, he's seven for seven from the field, five of five from the three-point line, has 19 points. He's, he's probably their fourth best player. It doesn't matter. you got to find the hot player. you got to get a hand on him, deny the basketball. Arkansas struggled to find him in transition get out on him, and, and he's gotten some open looks, and he's knocked him down. And it's not like the Razorbacks are playing poorly on offense by any means. 48 points and a half, you'll certainly take that. It's all about getting some stops now. Well, it is, and we talked about that a little bit in the first half. Mike Anderson's biggest obstacle with this team is what's he going to do with that point guard and that two-guard spot, uh, losing Mardrakis Wade, Fred Gully, Kiko Hydar, uh, those guys. You knew what you were going to get defensively from them every night. You may not get everything you want from him offensively, but defensively you knew you were going to get. And that's what Mike Anderson needs out of his guys. He's got to find that guard that can step up and be his defensive stopper. Maybe Jabril Durham can be that guy. He showed flashes of it in the first half. He needs to be consistent. Arkansas played okay offensively, but got to get those stops on the defensive end. Let's take a look at some numbers here from this first half of play. As we look and, you know, take a look at, at this comparison here between Arkansas and Alabama State, it's 75% from the field for Arkansas is unbelievable. 50% very good for, for Alabama State. The three-point numbers have just been incredible, though, right now for Alabama State. They're 9 of 12 from three. Arkansas is 4 of 8. It's not like they've done anything bad. It's just Alabama State has been shooting out of their minds. Two teams making a lot of shots. One is just shooting at an amazing clip in Alabama State. But again, they're, 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 un they're not uncontested, but they're not contested enough shots. Arkansas has got to get a hand up and get out on the shooters. That, that, that's it for the second half. If Arkansas plays good defense, stops those shooters, wins easily going away. Now, if you're Mike Anderson, what, what do you like in this locker room? Are you unhappy with your yes. effort? Yes. Uh, this is a swag team. Not, not to take anything away from Alabama State, this is a swag team. You've recruited, you know, national type players, big time guys. You expect them to come out and give you a little better performance. It's the first game of the year. You're wanting to set a tone for the season. So I guarantee you right now that locker room, Mike Anderson setting a tone with his ball club. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it with the score tied. 48 apiece between Arkansas and Alabama State. When we come back here on the Halftime Report, we're going to get to see what happened when Arkansas went down to visit Valonia, holding open practice there in support of Tornado Relief. It was a great event. We'll get to check that out after this.
right, let's go this way right here. Come on. All right. Let's go see some Razorback, huh? The Razorback team has never been here, and, and obviously with this community going through so much, it, it's our way of giving back, and uh, they get a chance to touch and, and, uh, and have a conversation with these guys. And, uh, and I thought it was great. I thought it was an awesome awesome event, awesome evening, and, and we got some out of it. Not only we got out, I think, the, the gift of giving, but also from a, a team standpoint, uh, just trying to get better. We certainly appreciate it. Certainly do, because uh, Bologna's been through a lot the last three years. But nobody owes us anything, but we appreciate everything we can get to help. It means a lot to the community. It's, a lot. it's going to be a big turnout today, and everybody's happy to see the whole. Let's go out and uh, we'll have some fun. It's going to be a fun day. I think it was a fun experience for the Razorbacks and for the um, and for the state of Arkansas, just for the Razorbacks to come down to the Central Park for a change and play. Just incredible to see the number of people come out and the donations that were given, and then just the kindness and generosity of the Razorbacks.